Again, welcome once again to Leonardo Social Connecting. Mm -hmm. This is part of our coffee and cocktail series we do every Monday and Thursday. Mondays, we are in a space that's available to those in Asia, Oceania, uh, and in the Americas. And then on Thursdays, we are in a space that is connected to the Americas and Europe, Middle East, uh, and Africa. Feel free to join us at any of those times. You can find out more information about that on our website, leonardo.info. Uh, welcome once again. Um, this is Leonardo Social Connecting. We're gonna be here today to talk about WeLink. I'll be introducing that in a minute. Give everybody a chance to log in and get their watch party started. I think we're in a good space to get started. All right, I'm gonna stop this hmm. sharing this screen and then I'm gonna hand it off to Diana. Hello everyone. Welcome to Leonardo's Coffee and Cocktails. I'm Diana Aiden Shanker and I'm the CEO of Leonardo. We are the International Society of Arts, Science and Technology. If I sound or look excited, it's because I really am. This is very, very special for us to get to celebrate together the, uh, I think, historic and groundbreaking uh, exhibit, We Link. We are honored and uh, humbled to be joining with 10 organizations around the world supporting this initiative and uh, be able to welcome artists and um, leaders of this initiative. Uh, I'm going to turn it over in a minute to our managing director who will welcome us further. But let me just share that Leonardo is uh, uh, at the intersection of art science and technology to convene where we become most human and most humane, to convene us where we create, to convene us where we innovate to convene us through our hybrid creative practice, our art, our science, our digital culture in new ways, even during this very challenging time. Uh, and through this challenging time, try and find and uh, amplify the light that we'll be learning about more tonight, the light that comes through our creative spirit and collaboration. We are proud to share this community and community building supported through our publications, Leonardo through MIT Press and our series of books and other uh, journals and uh, initiatives. We are proud to learn from our incredible community of organizers and doers and thinkers through our programs such as this coffee and cocktail uh, gathering that we're giving space to on Mondays and Thursdays, convening people around the world, and uh, in particular, convening uh, and connecting through our partnerships. We partner with each and all of you now and here and beyond, and uh, quite significantly with our new partner, Arizona State University, which uh, I am proud to now be affiliated with, and uh, I am in fact, zooming in from Arizona, uh, where we have blue skies and palm trees and safe practices indoors and creative practices online. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, our wonderful managing director, but I just wanted to make it a point to be here with you to say thank you for the opportunity to be together, to honor and support your work and efforts. This really matters to us. It's really important to us. It's why we're here and uh, why we're going to continue to 
grow together and show the world how we can be moving forward to a new way of being human and humane and humanizing our digital culture. So thank you so much. Enjoy this hour together. And welcome to Danielle Simbera, our Managing Director. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And we're very excited to be hosting this series. Uh, it's always interesting to be able to connect with people who are in various time zones. Um, this exhibition, to me, was incredibly inspiring because, one, it was birds on the, on, um, the, the internet as, as a, uh, somebody who uh, has founding roots in net art. I really uh, appreciate the way that this uh, exhibition had had been developed, but also timely. Uh, so uh, all around the world, we have something that's unifying us, and that is uh, this this COVID nineteen, uh, but also all the the effects of social distancing. But we want to address it as social connecting, and this is really important for us at Leonardo to create these spaces. Uh, so I am very interested to connect in these spaces creatively, and I would love your collaboration in that. Uh, so for this particular uh, uh, event today, we are very fortunate to be working uh, with some amazing partners, including the Kronos Art Center, uh, who really came forward with this idea of the exhibition, uh, We Link, uh, 10 easy pieces. I'm gonna, uh, we'll talk, we'll have uh, Jean Ga, the curator of this exhibition, speak about this in, in momentarily, but uh, Cronus Art Center is one of our partners in, uh, uh, in Shanghai, uh, working on contemporary art issues in um, all around the world. It also is supported by Art Center Nabi out of Seoul, Korea, and we're also fortunate to be able to live stream this with the same functionalities of having a conversation through MANA, uh, a um, live stream platform uh, that is, is really making this possible to make this a truly global event. So I want to thank everyone who's been part of actually making this evening um, possible, but also to understand that We Link at 10 Easy Pieces is a really uh, great collaboration between um, Cronus Art Center, Art Center Nabi and then Rhizome of the New Museum. All of these institutions put, came together to help support the artists in this exhibition. And we find ourselves in good company with about 10 other amazing global uh, organizations, which I really encourage you to check out all of the work that they are doing. We are all in this together uh, and it's a very good company to be a part of. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a uh, an introduction to this exhibition, uh, We Link 10 Easy Pieces by a curator and director of the Cronus Art Center, uh, Jean Ga. And then we will also have a, a few of the artists whose work is in the exhibition live here to talk about their work itself, followed by some um, uh, engagement and comments and ideas with uh, So Young Ro, director of the Art Center Nabi, and uh, all of you. Um, so I want this to also be a, a, a conversation. I want it to be fun and artful. So feel free to use um, the chat spaces to, to provoke questions and dialogue and ask questions. We are going to be monitoring these throughout um, this time. I, and we also will be trying to cover that here uh, on Facebook Live, Mana, and Zoom. Uh, this will also be recorded and made available uh, after this event, and so we'll be able to share this as an ongoing conversation that we can continue to have. Um, so I would like to uh, introduce uh, Jean Ga. He's a media art curator. He's a distinguished professor and director of the Center of Art and Technology at the China Central Academy of Fine Art, CAFA. And he is the, uh, the, uh, the Cronus Art Center director in Shanghai and the, um, the person who has really brought us all together as a community. And I want to thank him for, for really making that happen. So thank you, Jean Gat. And I would love for you to come in now and introduce uh, the rest of the artists and the partners in here. And I'm gonna hand the baton over to you.
right we you're still muted i don't know where you are let's see let me unmute you all right okay there we go all Great. right uh hi everyone um so glad to be here and uh, uh of course uh, this is a amazing opportunity to uh to share this uh project with all of you and i wanted to before i started i wanted to um first of all thank the whole community and all the uh arts organizations that uh, that worked collab collaboratively with 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 us um and the artists of course and then uh, in particular i wanted to uh thank the um uh, for uh, three uh, uh, co-commissioning institutions, I mean, uh, uh, Arsene Nabi, uh, the uh, director of uh, Arsene Nabi, uh, Suyong Rose here, and she will also be joining us later, and uh, Rizong of the new museum, uh, with these two core uh, collaborators, we were able to commission uh, six new works for this uh, uh, ad hoc exhibition but it came out quite amazing as i as i see it now and um, and of course the the 12 institutions uh, worldwide and uh, come on come on board to to support and to share and to show uh, uh, solidarity with the concept with with the community and i think it's a uh, it's extraordinary and i'm very um uh honored and and very uh, grateful to this uh, uh, community of support and and solidarity um, I think um, it all sounds very serious and then uh, Daniela told me that this is a cocktail and coffee um, gathering so I prepare myself a, a dry martini and uh, and I think we're gonna uh, take it easy and and uh, talk in a more casual way. Uh, my my recipe is really uh, kind of interesting because uh, it was a recipe given to me with a with a very dry, uh, very 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 uh, icy cold with a dash of uh, a mousse just a little bit and then with a lemon twist is delicious. So anybody who's uh, on the on the East Coast, uh, time for having having a drink. So I guess this is a good format to to have a drink and the, and the, and the, have some nice conversation. And and <laughs> uh, Tiga, uh, I wanted to introduce uh, um, some of the uh, artists here on 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 with us right now. And I think we have a lot of. Uh, uh, artists who who are europe europe based so so time wise is a little bit uh inconvenient so uh we have people from china which is early in the morning for them uh from uh, from korea which is also not too bad uh, nine o'clock and uh, me in new york eight 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 o'clock perfect timing and then we have colleagues in san francisco five late in the afternoon so for having a drink and a coffee is all perfect um here with us, uh, we have um, uh, uh, several artists. Um, uh, if when I when I call your name, I just raise your hand so other people can see you. So uh, Liu Yi is the first one I saw, and so she's here from um, China, one of the artists uh, in the show. Uh, Ye Puna here's here in Beijing. She's a uh, 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 on board with us, and then Sam and Tiga here in New York, in Brooklyn. How did you get the cats on your head? How does that happen? Is that real? Or it's an avatar. <laughs> that looks so funny. Um, uh, who else is here? And So Young, and she's the director of uh, Arsene Nabi. She's here with us, and uh, of course, I wanted to also introduce uh, Kronos Art Center on my. Uh, beautiful colleagues and they're uh, uh, amazing. They did all this tremendous um, behind the scene work so to make this happen. Uh, I'm, I'm so uh, grateful to them. And of course, I wanted to also thank uh, Dylan John. She, he's not here right now on, on this screen, but he's a, um, 
I think on the on the mana side to coordinate the Chinese, uh, you know, on, on the Chinese cell phone uh, interface to to communicate with people. And Dylan is the founder of uh, uh, Kronos Art Center, and uh, I'm really grateful to his dedication and support for uh, making all these programs happen. And so I can, you know, be really uh, uh, just doing my own work without having to worry about uh, finances and uh, fundraising and all those stuff that the most art, arts organizations are uh, 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 have to be worried about. So I'm I'm really grateful that uh, Dylan is being always behind us and um, for uh, in, at Corona Center to to make everything happen. And he's 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 uh, he's great. Um, and then um, so talking about this show. Um, I think I just wanted to give a brief like a uh, uh, background how this all came about. Um, I, uh, yes, of course, then the, the chron coronavirus broke out in China uh, in early January and then suddenly and we, we were told that, uh, I mean, I was also working on several, several other big projects. Uh, one of which is a uh, triennial that was supposed to open uh, February 20th at the Kafa Art Museum, which is a very large uh, enterprise, a uh, very large undertaking. And, and I was told that uh, this, was, this was on hold and Kafa had to shut down. And right after Wuhan was shut down. So, and then, and follows, following suit and every, everything is shutting down in China. And of course we had to cancel our um, programming for the spring at Kronos Art Center. So this all came so abrupt and so uh, unprecedented, unpredictable. Um, and then, I mean, I was kind of a, you know, a, it also appeared to be very surreal to me. And then and I thought about uh, how we're gonna go about with this. And this is a quite uh, extraordinary, uh, quite uh, unbelievable. And, and then, but we, we need to do something. Um, so I, um, in, in mid-February, I sort of put out an open call to my colleagues and friends around around world in the, who who are also uh, doing the same thing we're doing uh, uh, who are who are uh, dedicated to media art as as a presentation and discourse and 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 to my surprise and to my great surprise and and uh, and excitement and uh, many people responded immediately like uh, uh, and and showed their their, their uh, solidarity and support to to come on board to join forces and to uh, work with us to uh, make this happen. And within a few days time, I've, I've received uh, uh, many uh, 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 dedicated responses. And so this was how it all came about. Um, and then we, because this whole thing happened really quickly and then was not uh, scheduled or, or, or budgeted. so. We had also a little bit of a budgeting issue, and then uh, So Young from Arsene Nabi and, uh, and Michael and, and Zach from uh, Brizong, they offered uh, cash support to to uh, help us to do uh, uh, some commissionings because I thought we 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 wanted to uh, not only just show something but also uh, show something very very relevant and immediate and uh, meaningful. Uh, with, within this uh, uh, context, conceptually as well as technologically and formally, so we needed new work that is a uh, 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 strong and and uh, and uh, uh, making uh, sense too, and um, uh, not only just good work but good work that also is uh, uh, responding to this uh, very uh, immediate reality. And so, so we, we, I'm really grateful that all my, uh, my, uh, my old colleagues that they responded in such a uh, uh, supportive manner. And, and then we, we uh, in, in the next few uh, 
days, pre pretty much so. And we, we, we got another um, uh, uh, dozen uh, uh, responses from various institutions. And they are, uh, yeah, they are, uh, of course, uh, Arsene Nabi, Raizon from the New Museum, and Arts at the CERN, which is a, a, a Geneva CERN-based uh, arts program, uh, EFLUX in New York, uh, uh, House of Electronic Arts in Basel, uh, EMAO in Brussels, um, that is, uh, um, and uh, Laboratoria Art and Science Foundation in Moscow, and, and of course, um, uh, Leonardo, um, uh, where we have this uh, 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 cocktail party happening right now. Um, new um, hybrid art horse uh, art house in uh, uh, Eidenhoven in, in Holland, and Sati at, uh, at uh, um, Mountain View in uh, California, and V2 Lab uh, in Rotterdam. So uh, these are all very uh, important uh, media art nodes and organizations around the world. So, um, you know, uh, in, 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 in a way that, that is also a very understandable that they, they uh, can immediately understand uh, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, necessity and the, 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 the timeliness of doing, a work, doing, uh, doing work together uh, within this online platform, within this uh, uh, mobile uh, 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 environment. And so uh, this was basically what would happen uh, within a very short period of time. So we had we had uh, 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 the 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 logistics ready to to launch the show, and then we have um, these amazing works um, by ten artists. Um, uh, six of them are commissioned works, and four of them are existing works that uh, uh, are sort of uh, are making a very good uh, uh, complement to the uh, specifically uh, commissioned pieces. Um, with regards to the title of the show, uh, why we call it Chinese Pieces, and, and of course we, uh, I was thinking about something that is uh, uh, how do you respond to a situation as this severe and and uh, and uh, uh, quite quite quite? Uh, uh, I mean, I was pretty much caught by surprise to begin with. And how do you respond to such a situation with a, with a, with with a, with a, with a, with a, without to be so melodramatic? And, but also to be, uh, 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 in a way, more more uh, uh, addressing the issue, but it's not so specific, but it's addressing the issue that is uh, that is, that the causes or what's happening. So, in, uh, what's under the, what's the underlying problem and, and that we are facing as a, as humanity, as as a, as a, as, a, as a cultures and, and societies. So. So uh, the film uh, Five Easy Pieces can cross uh, somehow uh, as, a, as a hint, as, a, as, a, as an indicator. Um, and this is about, I mean, I think a lot of people know about this movie, especially uh, uh, in the West. You know, it's, a, it's a quite a, a famous uh, movie uh, uh, starring uh, 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 Oh yeah, uh, uh, hmm? oh, Jack Nicholson. Yes, of course. Um, and and that's really funny because uh, some somebody so so familiar and so famous, uh, you just forget. And um, you know. Anyway, so five easy pieces about his own personal uh, existen existential crisis, and then how he, he tried to deal with it with with this uh, easy way out, with playing this uh, introductory uh, piano pieces, like a very popular for uh, beginning learners, and and uh, 
and that that was somehow the way I tried to phrase this uh, uh, frame this 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 uh, exhibition. So it seems to be uh, 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 it, it, in a way it's sort of like a, you know that the novel by by Milan uh, Kundula, the, the the unbearable lightness of being. You know, so it's a it's a, it's very heavy. It's too heavy. You have to see it. You know, in 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 a in a, in a, in, a, in a more uh, uh, in a in a lighter fashion, yeah. So 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 that that's how it came about. And um, um, I think uh, 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 so. The the works that I that that I uh, that artists that I invited, uh, they they work in 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 very many different uh, styles and and uh, and uh, many different kind of a. a, a, a Approaches and uh, also addressing the issue uh, quite uh, 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 differently, and uh, some as uh, and and uh, uh, approach it in in a very direct uh, front frontal kind of a uh, pro, uh, sort of a uh, uh, way. Some are more uh, understated and and uh, sort of uh, circumventing the the subject with uh, with uh, very interesting approaches, and uh, some are. Uh, humorous and some uh, um, um, uh, uh, kind of a uh, over the top, you know. Like uh, I, 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 I would walk you through a few of the projects uh, later on, and uh, uh, to see that the variety of uh, 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 body of work that that is being presented in this show. And on the other hand, I also uh, thought that uh, uh, it is important that we. Uh, it, this is sort of give us another opportunity to reaffirm the importance of uh, net art, which I was quite involved in the in the early '90s in New York with uh, with the community here, and uh, I also personally had a had a uh, have a, a a very strong kind of a, a affinity with with the whole practice, and I thought this was a, a you know very uh, a vital moment to re readdress this, this our net art as as a as a as an important uh uh, uh discourse language uh, as well as a, a formal approach um because we are actually confined with the uh, with the vast vast network we, we we have no physical uh 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 access to to many things so we are we are here in brooklyn where i am actually uh, you know, sitting in the house every day and and uh, occasionally go out for a walk and so that's all, um, and uh, it is uh, quite uh, quite an experience. And uh, so, but but everybody is using the network as a, as a way to communicate to 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 carry on. So so how do you uh, so network and net art seems to be a very vital. Uh, viable uh, uh, language to speak aloud and to speak uh, and to shout uh, aloud. And I think this is really the moment to revive the importance of net, net art. And, and, and then, so instead of uh, doing an exhibition that, you know, many institutions are doing, uh, using internet, using network as a way to present their the, the work, exhibitions, but but um, we wanted to uh, literally using the network as a medium, not only to present a, 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 a work, but, but the work has to be native to the network. The, the work has to be uh, addressing the particularity and the specificity of network. And um, to engage critically, uh, creatively, and, uh, and, and, and artistically. Um, so this is uh, this is uh, the intention behind uh, this project. One way is to address the, the current uh, uh, disaster, the, the crisis, uh, to bring to bring people together, and on the other hand, also to to reinforce the notion of net art as a, as a, as a, as a very uh, important and and a viable way of. Uh, uh, of, of art form in this particular time of uh, 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 in time and space, um, uh, so that is uh, primarily the the 
intention behind uh, the project. And then I'm so happy that uh, it all came out uh, very uh, nicely. And then, uh, and of course, I wanted to be, uh, I wanted to thank all our uh, collaborating institutions and, and artists in particular, and the supporting uh, teams to make this happen in such a, a uh, uh, in such a short period of time in, and done in such a professional way. And uh, we have, uh, um, uh, I think the, the, the response uh, throughout, uh, since we announced the project, the response throughout the international community uh, has been very positive and, uh, and uh, uh, we are very uh, grateful to all of you. And, uh, and uh, I personally also uh, very honored to, to be able to uh, work with all of you to, to make this happen. Um, so that's what I wanted to uh, just to say a few words about the show. And I wanted to give you a quick walkthrough about the exhibition. Uh, so I'm going to share my uh, screen here. Uh, uh, just walk you through the exhibition uh, very briefly. And then I have some of the artists to, to uh, 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 talk about their work from their perspective and in a more uh, personal and, and uh, in a, a informed way. Um, so here I wanted to share screen. So this is the, the website. Uh, uh, when you go to this, uh, when you go to this, uh, this link, uh, this is the, uh, the project web, uh, website. So you, 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 you go there and then you, you get this window out. So it, it, uh, it's very intuitive uh, interface design. I'm, I'm very proud of this. Uh, this, this, this project as a web presentation, I'm, I'm quite, uh, because my, uh, Bixing, my, my colleague at CSC, they, they proposed some very complex uh, design uh, scheme that I thought was too challenge, challenging. And then it all came out so great. I'm, I'm very helpful. Uh, yeah, I'm really grateful. Um, so you, you, you have uh, one side Chinese, uh, English and Chinese, so, uh, you have all the, uh, I also encourage you to click into all these in, uh, institutions uh, who are our uh, collaborators and, and, and uh, partners in this project. Um, so then you go here, you click this link and it brings up this menu. And uh, then you can go to each one of these works. Um, so, uh yeah uh agile let me uh those artists who are not present here i so i want to give a, a quick introduction agile uh, that's his uh, uh pseudonym uh uh pen name as an artist a chinese artist who is uh, uh, living in shanghai and beijing and he is sort of a, a veteran media artist and and uh been working with uh, technology with uh, with network and also uh, uh, electronic media um, for quite some time is uh, 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 quite well is well has done quite a, a in interesting body of work and his work uh, in this particular piece uh, is an uh, online game that is uh, that goes beyond the gaming uh, 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 facade, you know, it's really tries tries to deal with uh, uh, the decentralized network and to recreate and and uh, identity uh, and through the uh, uh, the, the blockchain net network. So it's very interesting and engaging uh, interactive piece. And so you would uh, look at this uh, work introduction and then click into the the actual work. So it would bring you to the work itself. And so you would uh, draw, uh, draw your icon. Anyway, um, find where you are and you can choose to, to draw some more, edit some more.
Okay. So, so this freezes it, and then uh, you would uh, you can move around, and anyway. This is a huge endless canvas that, that uh, this is an ongoing project he's still developing. And as you uh, uh, explore the work, it more would just reveal itself. And it is uh, a work that, that is uh, uh, designed to uh, uh, have many iterations and eventually would uh, tie into a blockchain as a, as a, a, a quite a substantial uh, work uh, as it comes along. And this is by a uh, uh, artist uh, based in, in um, uh, Brussels, uh, 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 Belgian. And he was um, so uh, when when uh, the coronavirus uh, first happened in, in China, and I thought, okay, uh, you know, uh, uh, New York is a sort of like Hafe 7, and uh, 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 as Europe was also, but in no time, uh, it was everywhere. So he, uh, as, a, as, as a Belgian uh, a citizen, he was told to, to, to go under as well, and, and they all, was, uh, Belgium was locked down, so he was under quarantine. So he he started to uh, begin this piece as a as a diary kind of a, 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 a online work. So this is uh, all the all the days. Uh, so by now he's he's been under quarantine for twenty days. So he's been making one piece of, a day, and it's going to be ongoing until until I don't know until the 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 the, the crisis is over. Um, so in each day, there's a new work coming up. Um, and this is Tiga and Sam's work. I would let them explain that uh, later. Um, and of course, uh, we have also have a work by uh, Joe D. He's a, he's a, a, a pioneer of net art. And, and uh, uh, we uh, can't expect anything less than surprise. And that's, that's what's happening. So be careful, it's a, a lot of strobe lights uh, on screen. And gonna, um, but it's amazing work that they, they, we commissioned this work. Um, so, And uh, we move on, and so this is uh, Li Wei's work, and she's present, so she would she can talk about it a bit later uh, herself. And this is a work by uh, Evan Ross, and he's an American artist living in Berlin. And it's a very interesting work. He's use, use, he uses a P2P network, a uh, peer-to-peer -peer network to access the work. When you access the work, you're actually creating a physical connection with the work. It's, it's a video piece. Um, it's 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 very conceptual and and uh, it seems to be very simple, but it's a, it's a very rich and and uh, conceptually strong. Um, and this is one of these uh, uh, crazy uh, young artist group from Shanghai. Um, they are sort of like a hodgepodge of. Uh, uh, of uh, uh, many different kind of uh, 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 styles and and uh, and uh, 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 different approaches to to uh, so so called headline stories. You know? uh, there, it's it's uh, some kind of a. a, a, a Dystopious uh, landscape and and uh, a realm that uh, that uh, all sorts of things happening.
And each one of these video pieces are very elaborate uh, uh, narrative stories uh, that mixes uh, humor, horror, uh, sarcasm, and uh, uh, yeah, punchlines, plus uh, eroticism and violence, and 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 uh, to pick to 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 portray a post-apocalyptic uh, sort of dystopia that also reflects the 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 absurdity of of the of the reality. Yeah. Um, so I encourage you to to go through all, all these uh, 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 areas of, of the work. Um, so they are also updating uh, the work itself uh, quite uh, 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 often. Um, uh, this is a work by a uh, um, uh, Dutch artist, and it's about uh, putting your own slot, uh, taking a picture, and and create your own uh, time slot on the on the infinite length of a, a, a time zone. Uh, this is a, a work by a Korean artist. Um, I think Soyun probably can talk a little bit about, about this work because it's a uh, it's in a way that uh, also uh, addresses this uh, contemporary surveillance society and people's uh, uh, surrendering to to a, a uh, total control um, and in in the way it's a, it's it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a metaphorical as well as a a a, a very uh, kind of a, a, a sort of under uh, so, uh, interesting way to address a very, very uh, serious issue uh, that we are facing with. And Dr. Krona online is a, is a work by Yepuna, she's here, and then she can uh, talk about it. It's a very humorous piece, um, as well as uh, 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 Li Wei's work. And, and they are very uh, 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 funny in a sense, but also uh, very uh, profound. On, 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 uh, in 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 in, um, in in a way that uh, that re uh, really uh, opens up the the possibilities of uh, many uh, uh, new approaches to to networked art. Um, so um, I think uh, all in all, I think this body of work are, are quite uh, quite uh, uh, interesting and quite uh, uh, relevant to to the time. And to the to the net time, net art as a as a as a genre as as a as a discipline in in our practice. Um, with that, I think I'm gonna uh, hand over to 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 the artist and to to uh, uh, to talk about their work. And uh, um, so, I think how we're we gonna go about this. Uh, we can we can actually why don't we start with uh do you want to with tiga and sam do you want to uh share what your screen let's have uh jean gar you want why don't we stop uh sharing your screen and then tiga and sam what we hand it over to you okay. and you can introduce yeah, your work i'm gonna quit my screen here sorry. I, I already did that for you oh you did okay yeah <laughs> great total control can you, is this, uh, everyone see this okay? Yeah. Okay, our big dumb cat heads are here. Um, great. Uh, so, uh, I'm Sam. I'm Tiga. And, uh, Hi, first, everyone. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much, first of all, for just, uh, for, for having us. And it's been a real pleasure to, uh, to participate in this, in this show. So, uh, th thank you very much. And, and thank you for organizing this, um, this talk. Uh, it's really, it's really great to uh, to be here. Um, so yeah, our piece is called "Get Well Soon." And uh, maybe I'll start talking about the piece a little bit, and then you can you can yeah, fill in. Great. So uh, I'll just load it up. So uh, oh, and I'll make a small. Hold on a second. Let me make a small. Oh, just a work in progress. There we go. Okay. Um, so yeah, our piece is called "Get Well Soon," and it's it's um it's really the, the kind of original idea of the piece is that. We wanted to make a, a, a almost like a massive, never-ending, like get well card of some sort, 
And um, in order to do that, we went um, to the website uh, GoFundMe.com, which uh, I think probably most Americans will be familiar with, but uh, for, for those of us who are joining this, uh, this, this call and are not Americans, GoFundMe is a website um, that allows people to create uh, fundraisers uh, for a variety of causes, but, but principally uh, it's used in America to fund uh, uh, medical expenses. So, um, uh, you know, obviously, healthcare in the U.S. is not guaranteed. It's not considered a, a right. Uh, so many people either don't have healthcare, of course, or uh, have healthcare that's uh, pro prohibitively expensive. So GoFundMe is a way that people, you know, if you if you have uh, some onerous uh, health cost, you go to GoFundMe, you set up a fundraiser, and then you solicit. Uh, uh, money from your friends and and uh, family members. Um, so what we did for our project is uh, we wrote a web scraping program that goes to GoFundMe and it downloads uh, hundreds and thousands of GoFundMe fundraisers. And then from those pages, it finds comments of support that people have left on the pages. And uh, from this, we've created an archive of over uh, 200,000 um, messages of well wishes. So uh, I can kind of scroll through it. Each of these, it's going to be a bit small probably on your screen, so maybe I'll zoom in. So each of these uh, columns is a sort of just like a different, a, begins with different uh, phrases and words. And then you just sort of scroll across, across the whole thing uh, and, and you can go up and down. So it's quite a large, um, it's quite a large archive. Mm. Um, do you want to talk a little bit more about? Yeah, about I mean, this? we we state that it's an archive that should not exist um, because it's an archive that is being produced um, by a website that's sort of stepping in to a place where, you know, a a, a government healthcare system should uh, be. And obviously, that's not the case in the U.S. And so this work is very much also about what is what is allowed to be for sale what is allowed to be a commodity and you know as sam is saying in the us uh access to health care is commodified and coupled with employment which you know as we face the greatest uh, recession of our lives it, we are seeing how deeply problematic that is so it's it's an archive that also you know has a lot of tensions in it in some sense it really shows us really beautiful moments of mutual aid, sympathy, well wishes, generosity. And we're seeing a lot of that happen in the US right now. Like there's a lot of community support happening. There's a lot of community initiatives. But again, there's this tragic edge to it because these uh, gestures and these efforts are happening in the place where, you know, a, a, a systemic healthcare system should be providing care and support, um, particularly at this moment in, in in the US. So, yeah, so as a part of this um, project, we also commissioned a short essay from a writer, Johanna Hedva, uh, who has written a lot about um, uh, illness and she's known for sick woman theory, which is a theoretical take on, that connects illness and activism and revolution and so she's written this really beautiful piece about um, the revolutionary potential of this moment. Uh, do you want to share a quote? Yeah sure I, I could share a quote. Um, uh, yeah so she, she just to a little more yeah she's really interested in, in, in this essay that she's written for us about the relationship in language between revolution and illness as well as the relationship in time. Uh, so she says we tend to place illness and revolution uh, opposite each other on the spectrum of action. Illness is on the end of inaction, passivity and surrender, while revolution is on the end of movement, surging and agitating. But maybe this spectrum is more like an Ouroboros, one end feeding into the other, transforming into because of, made of the same stuff as the other. And she continues, and I'll just read this one last little thing. Now might be a good time to rethink what a revolution can look like. Perhaps it doesn't look like a march of angry, able bodies in the streets. Perhaps it looks like something 
uh, more like the world standing still because all the bodies in it are exhausted because care has to be prioritized before it's too late. Um, so you can also read the full essay on uh, the website. Yeah, and so the, just the final um, comment that we'll add is, you know, this product, uh, this product, this project is um, born of a process called web scraping. And um, Sam, do you want to talk a little bit about that since? Um, yeah, sure. Yeah, you've used that process a lot. Right. So, I mean, uh, in a lot of my individual work, as well as the work that she could I uh, do together, we use a technique called web scraping. And essentially what you do is, you know, you, you write a computer program that goes to the web and browses the web on your behalf. So, you know, I could have gone to GoFundMe and gone through each of the medical fundraisers individually and copied the comments individually. But instead of doing that, I wrote a program that, that did it for me, right? And uh, kind of the idea here is there are all these platforms that aggregate, that convert human experience into a commodity, right? Into uh, data that can be, um, uh, that's bought and sold, right? Um, and with web scraping, we sort of are aggregating human experience as a data set, um, uh, sort of in the same way that Twitter or Facebook or whatever would leverage that value. Um, but instead, um, it sort of allows us to explore all of these truths and contradictions that are really just kind of hiding in plain sight online. And I think that's, that's probably all we need to say right now. Uh, thank you. All right, so oop, let me, let me um, I just should stop un unmute screens. myself. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah. Right. All right, yeah. fantastic. Well, thank you guys very much for sharing that. Um, be, in, in respect to time, uh, I'm going to move on to the other artists in this, uh, but I, I really encourage you to uh, use the chat for questions. Cronus Art Center has shared a lot of links, including the links to uh, the works themselves. And what we'll do is that it, as we gather this information, including those who are, uh, who are coming in on Facebook and on Mana, we are listening to you and we're collecting your questions and we're gonna open up for discussion and after we hear from the other artists. So I am actually gonna call right now on um, let's see, uh, Li Weiyi, if you can uh, go ahead and share your screen. I can do it. Great. Um, a minute. Hello, so um, I'm Weiyi, and uh, the piece I'm presenting this show is called it the ongoing moment. Um, the initial idea of my work is simply to make something fun or playful. And at the same time, I'm also very interested in those features on different photo sharing app. And you know, since Instagram released the new version of the, of the Sparkle AR last year and allow everyone to create their own augmented reality features, I was super obsessed with this. And when I look through all this kind of futures, I know this one thing is that, um, let's just go check, look through the things, is that um, I found that most of people were kind of like making masks and uh, something that can like cover your face or something that can work as a disguise or a decoration. So, but maybe that what should a future should be in people's mind something that covering the face but at this moment you know everyone is wearing masks here in china at least in a way everyone is a, is wearing a future um but for me like when you making a 3d 3d analog of something and when you build something on any 3d modeling software the most interesting part is that you can actually make something inter make intersection of objects that means one thing can intersect another thing and two things can occupy the same space at the same time. This kind of digital materiality is the most exciting part for me. Um, I, indeed, I did many projects about this. I can give you a, an example. This is something I'm 
currently working on. It does not belong to this project I present in this show, but I'll just give you an example. So what, what I'm trying to do in this project is trying to combine or sandwich multiple 3D scans and trying to use human body to build God statues in Buddhism. So this is just several image example. So what I want to try is to make something about this idea of intersection. I also want to make a series of like um, virtual sculptures. They are all intersections of mundane objects and human body. This is my initial idea, but since I talked to Bi Xing, I took her suggestion and decided to develop these ideas into a game. Maybe uh, or an online test. You know those very popular online personality tests or psychological tests. So, I will, this, the, but the rule of this test of my gain is that people cannot choose a future for themselves. I will choose this, uh, I will choose the most proper future for you. So maybe one goes through this game and showing you the whole thing. So that's, this is the homepage of my project. You will be asked, asked, for ask three questions. One is about your feeling. Maybe I'll just this one. And the second one is about your intelligence. The third one is about your secret. And oh, I already typed something. And say something, just say hello. So what, what you need to do is only follow your instinct and to make the choice, to click OK. So this, this, oh, this one is kind of an extreme example of intersection, I guess. And um, if you, and what I can do is I also can take a, take a photo of this. For, I can also like save this photo for those people who use Chrome on, on an Android device, you can directly share the image to your friend. There will be a button on the, on the screen. So yeah, I don't have a conclusion for this project. That's all I want to say and um, have fun. Thank you. It's a, it's a fun project to, to okay. en engage with and um, thank you so much for, for sharing this. We're gonna, we'll be able to also um, talk about these really soon because I think there's a lot of questions already in the chat. I also mm -hmm. want to introduce uh, Yefuna. You want to share your project? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, let me share the screen. Uh, firstly, thank you for having me uh, in this moment to commission me this work. Uh, it's called Dr. Corona. So it's actually um, AI doctor, which is referring to the online medical systems. So uh, if you look at this website, it's actually an online uh, doctor systems. You can actually uh, ask a question to this uh, online doctor, Dr. Corona. And they will, uh, this AI generator will automatically help you to uh, answer those questions and they have a both uh, Chinese and English version so you you can uh, they will answer your question by this uh, AI systems and as a reference I should tell the these things is a is a inspiration of me to doing this doctor Corona thing. It's actually a Chinese magazine called uh, Family Doctors, and it's a it's a very popular magazine during the time of um, I think nap, uh, last century. So there is a um, it's still publishing, but they have a several different uh, uh, version, and the, the the top column of this is called Doctor Ko. So Doctor Ko is a it's a uh, uh, fictional characters uh, they made for this uh, doctor can answer any question of the uh, how to say the the email uh, the mail from the from the patient. 
and uh, this is so popular like each um each month they have uh, several people like uh, i think over uh, 10,000 people will write to this doctor of corona to to answer the conscious of the uh, in their life and some of them is super wide it's it's like a, a most strange question you can ever imagine but dr Ko is always answer it in very professional way and the dr Ko actually i uh, i had a chance to uh, interviewed some uh, former editors from this magazine and they told me that the Dr. Ko is actually not a real person, it's a fictional person they made. But uh, behind this Dr. Ko is um, a group of uh, top doctors, like experts from China in different uh, uh, hospitals. So they actually answer it in a very professional way uh, by these uh, very strange questions. So uh, as a reference, I also think this uh, name is a kind of similar, um, the Dr. Ko and Dr. Corona. So I made this uh, fictional name of these uh, specific characters. And if you uh, look at this website, it's, uh, the design is, uh, uh, I, I try to imagine uh, very, how to say, like a spiritual uh, comfort place. So the inspect, this background is uh, always changing, but it's uh, it's actually those use those pictures from the uh, the desktop. Uh, we you always use this kind of uh, um, landscape landscape uh, pictures, and it's also remind me this uh, this kind of background with a very utopian thinking and floating with test, and the behind this is a is a uh, beautiful landscape background is always we can see it in China in some uh, um, uh, advertisement or some uh, billboard. They always look at the uh, look like this. Um, so uh, I think I can I can show. I don't know which question I should ask. This is random questions. So with these AI systems, uh, thanks for CC technique support. Uh, this is actually uh, developed from uh, Vitas. Uh, he helped me to, to uh, train these AI systems and we filled it with a very interesting resource. We filled it with uh, the field of uh, uh, news and uh, the news is both coming from the the official website like WTO, but also with uh, something rumor like from some fake news. And also we treat it with uh, uh, the text from social media like Twitter and Weibo. And uh, even we do it from, um, I use lots of resources from the spiritual quote, like uh, those online chicken soup things like some, some texts, they can conform, conform you spiritually. Why is it so slow? Maybe I need to reload it. And uh, it's, I think that because we don't know about the, what will be like, uh, uh, I don't, we don't know how can we, like what is the result it is? Because after we training and uh, we filled with different texts and we, we test it again, it's all coming from different results. And uh, what I imagine is coming from uh, the, the result will be something uh, who can conform people in some way. Uh, so it's not be, it's, uh, this prescription of the Dr. Corona wrote, maybe it's not a, uh, it, it wouldn't be a medicine or it wouldn't be really maybe helpful for the people really, really get well, but it can be something which is uh, mentally conform people to make people feeling better. That's how I imagined. But uh, finally the result is coming, um, not exactly what I imagined. Sometimes this uh, character of Tokyo Corona can be very weird. It can be cursing people or they can be 
say some uh, very strange words. So uh, it could be doesn't make sense at all. Mm. Oh, I don't know what happened. It doesn't generate. <laughs> Let me try the Chinese one probably. Uh, yeah, so it's we're coming uh, up by your question with a very somehow it makes sense in somehow uh, some way, but uh, uh, somehow it doesn't make sense. And uh, in this website, you can actually save this answer uh, and uh, to choose different angle and the different color to. Uh, and you can save it. Mm. So I think uh, the interesting part is, uh, I think it's a, it's a kind of a uncertainty of this, uh, uh, this final outcome. So somehow uh, I'm also quite enjoying people sending me over this, uh, this uh, answer like a different time, they ask a very different question and they all get a very different response. And also uh, it's easily to share with uh, your social media and you can ask a second opinion of, uh, of uh, your question. So this is a way to, people can, uh, how to say, like, like share the concern. And during the, the time they share the concern, they can be, can be confirmed and it can be reduced the anxiety. That's what I hoped. Yeah. I think that's it for, for me. Okay, well, thank you very much. This is really interesting. And I, I actually there was a, quite a few questions, both from Facebook and from the general chat about this. Um, so I'm gonna, let's see. Um, so we've had a lot, of these really provoking questions that have come through today. And I know we um, all have one, some that I wanna make sure that I get answered. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch us all into the gallery view and try to open this up for discussion. But I actually want to, uh, to ask the first respondent to this. So you can grow from Art Center Nobby to give some, to, to provoke some questions or some commentary on the exhibition and um, and its relevance today and, and, and how you kind of see artists role in this space or um, if there are some questions or um, comments on some of the works that we've discussed today please feel free to respond to that so uh, if you wouldn't mind sharing first and then what we'll do is we'll mm -hmm. open it up to the audience after that sure can you hear me mm -hmm. okay um Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. And it's great to be joining in this um, very historic um, forum in a very historic historical moment. Um, just as Zanga mentioned, uh, the reason I joined in this um, exhibition was very, how do you say it, um, prompt, very, um, very emotional, you know, was at that time was China, a lot of people were suffering and we don't, we, we thought it was a Chinese um, problem. Um, and then so, and at that time, I was really expecting like so many people in the media art scene, the great exhibition opening of Zanga's uh, February opening in Beijing, and then it was just canceled and I felt so bad. So I thought it was, um, uh, right thing to do as a as a showing as, as to show our commitment and solidarity to this uh, media arts community to join in in this sort of really you know uh, spontaneous uh, very um, very free and spontaneous response from the arts community to what's happening to the humanity on the whole so I started like that, and then um, it proceeded, as everybody, everybody knows, for the past um, couple of months. 
And then we saw how this developed into a pandemic. And of course, Korea was the next dest <laughs> destination. And as we were preparing for this, uh, collaborating with um, this uh, with Zanga, we had our we had to we had our you know outbreak, and everybody was panicking and, and all that. Now, now it's we are it's it's, it's almost what three months past all this. Now it's maybe time to really um, to think because we, we are spending enough time in isolation and, and um, try to imagine a new sort of world order and how artists and creative communities on the whole can contribute to this new world that, uh, that we don't know what it is like. We, have not, we, we, it's, it's really hard to imagine, but nevertheless, I think it's um, uh, important for, for us, arts community and creative people in general to use our uh, power and capacity for imagination to, um, to think about, not only to critique, but to think and to construct uh, a new society, basically, a new world, and what kind of world we want to live in, and what are necessary basic items that we uh, require. Just for reference, um, back in only three years ago, 2017, we opened, Art Center Nabi opened an exhibition called Neotopia. Now it's, it's become a sort of prophetic because uh, at that time um, we were also in Korea, we were suffering from sort of a big change that um, comes with chaos and political unrest and all those, th all those things. And as we all know, the issue of dataism, you know, data sovereignty and all these issues, uh, surveillance was just coming on the surface. So what we did was we went around the world and we asked about 300 artists uh, of all ages um, about what are you know what are the important questions that we are we must address uh, when we think of a future um, that relates to humanity and technology. And um, I won't bore you with all those details, but um, it was very uh, provoking and it was very um, fruitful because we were able to obtain some five key questions by asking around those, um, mostly people in the 20s and 30s, young artists. And uh, one of them was, uh, one of them was a new political and social economic order. So at that time, still uh, a lot of um, energy and attention was focused on the blockchain um, communities. And the other one was the social issues, like how do we, how can technology uh, nurture uh, emotional connectivity among people that was important and, and so on. And the resilience of the cities and all that. So maybe I think um, 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 this is a great start the um, 10 easy pieces, it's a great start. And I, 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 I jumped at it because we really need this kind of connection and space for um, discourses, for, imagine, for collective imagination, for critiquing and for, for creating also um, artworks, communities, societies, future and all that. So, um, so that's my general remark. Sorry if I kept you long. And um, I, I, I really liked um, most of all of the um, 10 pieces. Um, I like the variety. I like the range of topics it covers. Uh, like Li Wei Yi's um, work you just mentioned, it's, it's about playing. It's, it's a collective playing. We, how do we use new, new, this new spaces of uh, network and digital materials to, 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 to uh, re, uh, 
uh, create new personas and to make new connections with each other. So that was good. And, um, and all uh, other uh, works um, mentioned um, Lee Funa, Dr. Corona. I'm sorry it took long to, um, but I was able to um, do that, play with that. And um, so you were training, basically training your AI to be more, to be smarter, right? Yeah. And yeah, yeah uh, to be smarter. And then also at the same time to, to maintain humor and playfulness as I, as I understand it. So which is good. Um, and um, Sam and Tega, um, I, <laughs> I, um, I, I have to, yeah, I have to go back and look uh, more caref carefully what, what exactly you are critiquing you know, about, about commodification and the healthcare, healthcare um, uh, things. And I like to see how you would proceed from that, how you would um, engage people in this very important topic of. Uh, care and commodification. Thank you. I'll stop that. Well, thank you very much. I think those were great comments. Um, I want to acknowledge the time. I know that there's people coming in and out of here. So um, we have a lot of questions. <laughs> I'm actually going to refer to some of the, the so some of the questions in the chat, but I also want to open it up for everybody who's here in the room. So uh, during this time, we've had everybody turn off their cameras and their audio. Um, we're gonna give this opportunity to turn those on again, but I do ask you to keep your audio off uh, at least until um, we call on you by raising your hand. So in the, um, in the participation areas, I think in the chat section, there's a little, um, there's a little area, I think it's in the managed, it's in the participants section that you can actually raise your hand and it will alert me that your hand is raised and then I'll call on you um, for some of those questions. And then definitely, you know, at that point, um, unmute yourself and, and, um, and show who you are. But I do want to also make sure that we're bringing in questions from Mana and from Facebook. And because uh, those who are on Mana and Facebook are, are, are in some ways a little bit more distant in this third space, um, quoting Randall Packard's, uh, um, you know, provocation about how we do, how we connect these different virtual spaces together. Uh, I'm going to start with a Facebook question that actually relates to the whole concept of the project as a whole. And this one actually comes from Hang Lee. This was from Facebook. Uh, Hang Lee asks, would um, they would like to know more about how the works interlink with each other somehow? As this project is called WeLink, uh, would you like to, they would like to know more about how the works interlinked with each other as the, um, you know, because of the project name. And maybe that's a question for Jean Ga, uh, Jean Ga. do you want to respond to that question? Mm. Uh, yeah, um, we link, I think, uh, primarily, it, it does not um, refer so much to the work themselves, but rather as a community of other collaborating institutions uh, uh, that that come together to link and to support each other and show solidarity. Um, the community as a support, supporting mechanism is extremely important at this moment of a crisis and, and uncertainty. So in terms of a, a thematic connection between in between the works, I, I don't think that this was not my original uh, uh, concept to, 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 to have the works linked together because it was such a short period of time to put this together. Um, so thematically, it's more free flow that uh, there's some, you know, that's why there's a variety of works. So normally when I, when I work on a, a curatorial pro project, it's more thematically driven. So it's very about something is something. So everything's addressing the same issue. But for this particular project, I think um, it's very loosely connected, um, but it's connected. Connected in connectivity here more, more so refers to the community of a many different uh, 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 of voices and many different kind of uh, approaches and many different kind of uh, 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 
mechanisms that all come together as a whole. And that is uh, very much the idea behind the we link. So the we link is the, the, the framework that we, this is a network, a network as a, as a linking mechanism, rather than the, the, the exhibition itself as a, as a, as a, as a, you know, the exhibition itself is the subtitle, 10 easy pieces that addresses the varieties and, and existential uh, sort of, uh, 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 um, uh, you know, uh, subtleties and, and all of this and different kind of uh, uh, approaches and voices and, and uh, concerns. Great, thank you very much. Um, I'm, um, all gonna, I'm gonna follow that up with a question from Mana, uh, from the Mana audience. COVID-19 has changed our thoughts, ways of thinking, everyone, um, everything. And, and now what do we, what can we do with, um, by art or with art? So the artists are making art, is, is that okay? If artists is making art, is that okay? I think that's not more of a question, more of a statement. And then for um, the, the question is for viewers like me, who I live in Japan, we're, where we will start close to the city, uh, what do we do? I'm not exactly sure if I'm getting the translation in here correctly. So I think they're looking at what can we do as artists um, and those, for example, that are living in uh, um, places that are, are, are close to very highly dense urban areas. Maybe this is um, with the questions coming in from Japan. What do they do? Um, what can we do by art or with art? Um, so I think that, that maybe this is a topic question for everybody because as artists, you've responded to this as, and, and it demonstrated a how, um, mm -hmm. but maybe there's more. I think that Su Young, you, you, you uh, brought up that th and this is something that we've been having in our coffee and cocktail conversations. It's like, now is the time for us to actually shape the world Move we want. Forward. So Move yeah, forward. Um, so, how, so what's, what's the call for artists mm -hmm. on that? Um, when, well, when the establishment is strong and very firm, then there isn't much we can do, actually. So I think this is a very fertile ground for new artistic and creative imagination. Um, I would suggest that we um, re go back to basics. What do we need? What do we want as individuals? and as a society, as a community. And to, to really question that, <laughs> that age old question in a more, in a fresh, in a fresh context, I think. And for that, uh, for questioning and also um, way of coming up with alternatives, I think we need fresh perspective from artists who are not bound by um, establishment thinking or ideologies, this way. Yeah, that's 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 interesting. Any any other um, thoughts on on how artists' role in this space could be? And also, I think also I note the importance of technology, because um, in, what why technology? Because it's able to connect. Us by being able to connect with us, uh, among us, and also it can scale up. It can, what could be individual dreams, aspirations, and inspirations could be scaled up if we move, move on to the space of technology, so. Yeah, so the technology enables for us to actually uh, reach, reach a, an, a, a broader mm -hmm. audience or make mm -hmm. a deeper impact. And I think about mm -hmm. this, like, how we just did this event, you know, mm -hmm. we we're, we're actually on three different platforms uh, so that we can have the, the largest audience that we can, we uh -huh. can have this, in this time. And then it'll be archived again after the, afterwards. I think that's a good um, start. Um, I'm going to uh, bring in a question um, from an audience member that was in here. I don't see him in here. Is Max Weiss still in here? I think he left, uh, but this actually is a, in, in leading to to this idea of scaling, right? And then looking at net art as that mm -hmm. as that vehicle to actually how you can do some of these 
uh, mm -hmm. how, should, mm -hmm. how you do the scaling. Um, mm -hmm. Max asks a lot about, uh, especially um, this question, uh, first targeted to you, Zenga, uh, uh, but I want to open it up to the artists as well, uh, that you mentioned that there was a, a happy, um, you were happy with the exhibition interface, simplicity, and instinctual, um, because the design had uh, its design elements. So he wants to know more about this and if you feel the interface design is indicative of the curatorial message. I also actually am going to ask that question of all the artists because one of the things that I thought was important about this work is that all the artists created their own pages, which means that you had your own um, interface design, you had your own decisions that you made um, with the user interaction and who that audience was and how that audience would engage with the works themselves that was actually independent of the exhibition site. So as you're making these decisions as an artist, looking at net art as that medium, and then you're looking at it on a curatorial level, Janga, like if you're thinking about what a lot of us are thinking about right now is how do we do online exhibitions as many of us are moving on to that space, how does that interaction, that interface, um, what's, the, what's this curatorial meaning behind it, and then what's the um, um, co artistic concept behind your, some of the decisions that you're making. So maybe I'll start with Jean-Ga and then we can ask, um, we can go around and, um, to, to the artists uh, to hear what your feedback is on that. Uh, I think I think this is a quite a quite an interesting uh, question and also very fundamental to the practice of net art. Um, for me, I think uh, to present artists work in its entirety and its in in its integrity is the most important. So design is secondary to me. Um, the the reason that I thought so was because um, uh, is uh, it was because that. Uh, that design sometimes, I mean, I, I work with a lot of designers and I know a lot of very extraordinary designers uh, and admire them too. But design designers also have a very strong, you know, um, uh, uh, desire to present themselves as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a designer, right? So, so there's a conflict between, the, I, I don't think, I, I mean, I have to take back. So that if it worked together perfectly, and harmoniously, this could be the best of a of a of a marriage of design and art. But often, um, uh, when when each has a has a, has an ambition, and then, then when these two meet, and then so there there's some kind of conflict here is a um, is in, inevitable. So the artist, the artwork for me as as a as a curator, as so to present the artwork in its in its most effective way is the most important for me. But then when you have a very engaging design, the design has its, its own voice, very loud, and then that's overtaking the work itself. So that for me, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it, at least from my, from curatorial point of view that I, I, I wanted to suppress that a little bit, right? But what I'm really happy about this project is it, it, it is that it is really a very nice match. The design is very intuitive, very because we went through several iterations. Um, the design was a little convoluted before, and it was uh, it was too much design. And then the navigation is kind of misleading, and and it's uh, it's 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 not easy for for somebody to experience the artwork. But when we went through with uh, with my team and then and with the brilliant designer and the technologists all involved and i think it was a quite a successful model because so the design is strong but it's not over over shadow shadowing the work and then the work has its own uh, you know it it, it really uh, comes as as a as a rather you know cohesive match and then uh, uh, their work their work with each other, um, and but I think on the other hand, uh, I was a little bit uh, concerned about to have uh, too much design because the design interface is uh, very interactive, and then I saw the work is interactive uh, already to 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 quite extent, and so that has so, sort of to be balanced, and then it, it turned out to be that worked quite nicely and harmoniously 
And so I, I think uh, I'm very proud of this because not because I, I'm behind this project and I'm, I'm, I'm the curator of this project, or this is CSE's uh, work, but I'm honestly, because I've seen so many of these online presentations and then it's always a little bit of a off, uh, either this is too much or that is too less or vice versa. So in this case, this was a very happy marriage and then and I, and I'm happy. I think uh, I think if if online presentation can be uh, in the future can can work out such a scenario, could be so self uh, uh, complementing that would be perfect because because the presentation itself also addresses the the medium, um, and that is the medium. It's not overtaking the medium, but it's also address underlying the me underlines the medium and addresses the medium. As a as a indispensable kind of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, two uh. thank you that's good feedback um, I also want to be aware of time uh, we're we're around it's around um, six thirty Pacific time which is getting pretty late in in uh, in New York so I want to definitely make sure that we have um, urgent questions answered, uh, especially from those who are in, in this room right now. So um, I'm gonna, I know we still could talk a lot about the design stuff, because I definitely wanna make sure that all of the artists have something that, if, that they have, if they wanna share, share, but I also wanna make sure that we get some burning questions out. So do we have any burning questions out there? Okay. So not yet a burning question. So in terms of talking about um, the design concepts in your own work, uh, uh, for some of the, oh, okay, there is one, just one from Anna. Okay. Um, maybe one, one of, who, does, do any of you want to respond? Uh, Yifuna, Sam, Tiga, Li Wei, about thinking about some of the design and um, thought that went into the, um, the size that you built. Okay, go ahead. Hold on, I'll mute you. Mute myself, okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. So mm -hmm. I I don't have too much to say to, to talk about my own design of, the, of my own project, but actually my, back, my background was design. So when Janga talked about the work as a curator, it seems like, for me, it seems like he is actually talking about design because sometimes, you know, the job of design is about storytelling. Curating is also about storytelling. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I know for users or customers, it's easy for you to think about design as simply a vehicle to transport your idea and to make something into visible things to show to others. But sometimes I think the two things is, a, is, a, is the same thing. How, you tell, how, how can you tell the story to people? It's, and how do you visually tell the thing to the people? I think it, it's the same thing. And also, I, 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 I don't know, like, cause I know lots of, as a designer, I'm, I know lots of customer will like say, saying about this, you, I, you shouldn't give too much power to designers when you are doing this collaboration. But there's also lots of artists talking about this. Um, you should not give too much power to curator when you are doing the collaboration. Strong design, strong curation is the same thing for me. So that's what I want to say, yeah. That's, a, that's an interesting point. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually gonna uh, call on, on Stephen Oshowitz. Uh, you asked a question in, in the chat, but you're here. So I'm gonna um, let you actually ask that question. Uh, mm, okay. Uh, I'll ask the question, but I certainly can't uh, answer it. <laughs> um, oh, so uh, work uh, emanating, the work, the energy that artists do, um, that energy emanating from something very large, like the universe, so to speak. And then we also have um, kind of presupposed ideas about what design should look like. Um, and we kind of impose our own logic and sense of shape and structure on what 
we understand design to be versus or at least in contrast to what the universe uh, orchestrates as design. And as an artist who paints and draws, um, I feel like I tap into something much larger than I am that I don't understand, but leaves me at peace. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, Stephen. Um, okay, so we are over time, but I actually think this last comment was from um, Kim Boo Kim is actually really kind of poetic and I'm going to, I'm going to use this comment as, as sort of a closing one. Um, and, but I, I, I don't want this conversation to end. I want us to understand that this is the beginning of a conversation. And I think that there are going to be other dialogues around WeLink uh, um, 10 easy pieces uh, that will continue on as this exhibition is live. The exhibition will also soon be archived on the leonardo.info website. So you will be able to see this in, in a longer perpetuity. But um, I am also asking everyone in this space, everyone on Mana and everyone on Facebook, this is our time to act. This is our time to collaborate and come together. Uh, we at uh, Leonardo are listening to this and we're acting on it and we're working with you to, to build up the scaffolding and structure to, to create a more unified world, the way that we want to design it together, uh, you know, with uh, non-hierarchical, but also really collaborative um, across different um, uh, nations. I also see um, Gustavo has a brief question as uh, well, um, but I, I'm going to, maybe ask uh, people to also respond to this in the chat uh, and also in Facebook. Uh, Gustavo Gurincom from U uh, University of California, Santa Barbara, uh, who has been part of these coffee and cocktail hours, uh, asks, can you can summarize uh, the future of curation and net art? And I am asking you to do this in, in, in the chat, but I'm also asking you to come back. Um, I'm asking you to come back on Thursday, um, if you're in um, the EU or the Americas, uh, come in at 9 a.m. Pacific time, which is like evening time in, um, in Europe. Uh, and then the following Monday, we do this every Monday, uh, 5, 5 p.m. Pacific, uh, 8 a.m. China and Shanghai, and 8 p.m. in New York. Um, this is only the beginning of the conversation. This is not, in, this is not ending here. Um, I'm going to, I, I, I'm going to talk a little bit about this comment from, from uh, Kimbu Kim, but then I want us to continue on offline and online as we connect back in. Um, they say, I think this project means a lot. Artist uh, Namjoon Paik pro uh, uh, pro proved through the 1984 Good Morning Orwell project that there are other aspects behind the Big Brother. Mm -hmm function that the George or Orwell described. Orwell said that through technology, surveillance society takes place, but Najun Pike introduced other side of technology through simultaneous like, activities and exchanges. So currently we can conduct such short-term exhibitions and dialogues in Korea, the US, China, and the European regions through technology. Through these conversations, I hope that the prejudice against uh, each other will disappear and become a starting point for a better future. And I, I really, I really think that's important um, that we're doing this like literally around the globe. Um, subsequent linked activities are also expected. Uh, mm -hmm. I hope the anger against each other uh, because of this Corona virus will be a, des a design for the base for dialogue for a better future. Personally, the format is simple, but the message is that Sam Antigua's project was good, a time when comfort is needed around the world. We are here to comfort each other and, and provoke really important um, ways of thinking that actually can actually scale, um, that act, we can actually drive this. This is our opportunity to drive this. And I wanna thank everybody who has participated today. You did this, uh, we did this together. Uh, I wanna thank the Cronus Art Center uh, for coming forward with this initial idea with uh, 
Rhizome of the New Museum and for Art Center Nobby for supporting the artists in this. I want to thank all of the other really amazing partners around the world. And I know I'm missing a few, but Eflux, um, SETI, uh, CERN, uh, um, and others who have really um, bridged that art and science connection. We're doing this uh, as a unified uh, global movement. Uh, this is not something that should be um, held with one institution or not. We are doing this together and art is a vehicle to, for us to get there. Um, we just need to be supportive of how we do that. And Leonardo is here to help build that bridge and support. Um, please feel free to reach out to myself and Diana and Erica, uh, who are a part of the leadership team here on this call to help you structure, activate, and engage. We're listening, we're acting, um, just work with us. And we're so excited to have all the artists in this space and everybody in the room. So thank you all very much for, um, for taking the time today. And uh, we will see you on uh, this coming Thursday and then next uh, Monday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good closing. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank good you. to meet you. Nice to meet all of you.